Pohi, a Hawaiian princess. There once was a princess who lived in the kingdom of Hawaii. Her name was Bernice Pohi Paki. She was born in Honolulu on December 19, 1831. She was named after her mother's sister, Pohi. When just a baby, her auntie Pohi was rescued from a fire. The word Pohi means destroyed by fire, burned to put out a fire. Konia and Paki parents. The father of the princess was a high chief. His name was Abner Paki. The mother of the princess was a high chiefess. Her name was Laura Konia. Konia was the granddaughter of Kamehameha the Great. So that made the little princess a great granddaughter of Kamehameha the Great. The little princess was less than a week old when she was given to her grand aunt Kinau, the highest ranking chiefess at the time. It was the custom to let a relative hanai or adopt your child. Kinau is now Poahi's foster mother, and Kekua Noa was now Poahi's foster father. Home. When Poahi was seven years old, Kinau had a baby girl named Victoria Kamamalu. A year later, Kinau had died, and Poahi was sent back to her parents, Paki and Konia. Poahi's parents had Hanai, a little girl. Her name was Lydia Liliu. Poahi and Liliu were now foster sisters. Years later, Liliu became Queen Liliu Kalani, the last ruler of Hawaii. School. Kamehameha III said, My kingdom shall be a kingdom of learning. He knew that if a king or queen were to rule wisely, he or she must be educated. Many people from other countries were coming to Hawaii. The king did not know the English language very well. He made plans for a school where students would learn the English language. While the new school was being built, Pauahi went to a day school. She was eight years old. Two years later, the new school was ready. It was built behind the palace and had a classroom, a parlor, and bedrooms all surrounding a courtyard. It was a boarding school where the students would live. Teachers, Mr. and Mrs. Amos Cook. The school was called the Family School for Young Chiefs, and the name was later changed to the Royal School. The children of the highest rank were taught at this school. Mr. and Mrs. Amos Star Cook were the teachers who had come to Hawaii from America. They are Christian missionaries. Before he was now 10 years old, the school became her new home, and she lived there until she was 18 years old. There were 16 students, eight young chiefs, and eight young chiefesses. Of the 16 students, four of the boys grew up to become kings. Alexander Liholiho, Kamehameha the fourth, Lot Kapo'iwa, Kamehameha the fifth, William Lunalilo, and David Kalakawa. Two of the girls became queens. Emma, as the wife of Kamehameha the fourth, and Lili Uokalani. Pauahi the student. Every student had to learn to speak, read, and write English. They were also taught arithmetic, geometry, algebra, geography, astronomy, chemistry, grammar, and history. Painting and music lessons were given. The girls learned to cook and sew. Evenings were spent reading aloud or writing in journals. Sometimes just the boys read while the girls sewed. Horseback riding and swimming were favorite sports. Sometimes everyone sailed to another island. Music Box. When Poahi was 12 years old, there was a party to celebrate her birthday. Everyone played games and cake, raisins, nuts, and lemonade were served. A visitor from one of the ships in the harbor brought Poahi a present. It was a beautiful music box. A group of German sailors sang a song in German and brought fruitcake. In the center of the cake was the name Poahi, written with colored frosting. When she was 14 years old, a friend wrote that she was the best educated of all the Hawaiian girls. She was a young lady and had much grace. By the time she was 15 years old, she played the piano and sang very well. She gave music lessons to the younger girls. She loved to read lots of storybooks, history books, and books on travel. Charles Reed Bishop. One day, an American visited the school and met Poahi. She was 17 years old and very pretty. The American called on Poahi every evening. The two fell in love. His name was Charles Reed Bishop. Marriage. 
The princess and Mr. Bishop were married in the school parlor on June 4, 1850. Pawahi was 19 years old. Her parents did not approve of the marriage. They had hoped for their daughter to marry Lot Kapu Aiva, the future Kamehameha V. A year passed. The couple lived in a small house. Then, Paki and Kunia invited the couple to live with them in their new home called Haleakala. The princess was very happy. Her parents found Mr. Bishop to be a wise, honest, and devoted husband. Leaders of Honolulu. Mr. and Mrs. Bishop became the social leaders of Honolulu. Their home was the culture center of Hawaii. People gathered there for music, sewing, reading, and conversations. Children came for piano lessons from Hawaii. Visitors from foreign countries were entertained. They had tea parties, dances, and croquet games. No guest was turned away. Poi was known as a very gracious hostess. They had many servants, but Poi still hooked with the housework and sold some of her own clothes. She worked in her garden and gathered flowers to take to people who were sick. Poahi the teacher. On the day that Poahi was born, a tamarind tree had been planted for her in the yard of her parents. Now the tree was very big. It was under this tree that she would sit and listen to her people. Sometimes she would sit for hours. Her people would share with her their problems and she would give them advice. Pawahi sent gifts or went to the homes of people in need of something. She would visit a person who was ill and prepare a meal. She taught a Sunday school class at Kavaiohao Church. For many years, she was a faithful teacher of children, although she had no children of her own. King Kamehameha the fifth makes a choice. The princess could have have been a ruler or monarch of Hawaii. She could have have been a queen of the Hawaiian kingdoms. King Kamehameha the fifth sent for Paul just before he died. He had something very important to tell her. He said, I choose you to be queen, but she refused. World Traveler. The bishops traveled all over the world. They toured the United States, Canada, Ireland, Scotland, and England. Powahi wrote letters to her cousin. She wrote about the places she saw, the people she met, and the things she did. There was so much to see and do. Princess Ruth. When the bishops returned to Hawaii, Powahi continued helping her people. For her cousin, Princess Ruth Keilikolani became very ill, and Pauahi spent many days taking care of her. Princess Ruth and Pauahi were very close and dear to one another. It was Princess Ruth's mom that Pauahi had been named after. When Princess Ruth Keilikolani died, she left everything she owned to, own to Pauahi. This included all of her lands. Princess Pauahi was very, very sad. Soon her health began to weaken, and she became very ill. She had cancer. On October 16, 1884, at 12 minutes past noon, she died at Kuo Holly with her husband by her bedside. She was buried in the Kamehameha Crypt at the Royal Mausoleum in Nu'uanu Valley on Oahu. On her beautiful cloth casket was placed a silver shield with the inscription, The Honorable Bernice Pawahi Bishop, daughter of the Chiefs A. Pa Ki and El Kunya, and wife of the Honorable Charles R. Bishop. Born December 19, 1831, died October 16, 1884. Pawahi's gift. Before Pawahi died, she made a will. In her will, she explained what was to become of her lands. Princess Pawahi established the Bernice Pawahi Bishop Estate, which instructed her trustees to take care of her and maintain schools for boys and girls. And that is how the Kamehameha schools came to be. With the founding of the Kamehameha Schools, 1887, there is no end to the number of children that can be called the Hanai sons and daughters of Bernice Powahi and Charles B. Bishop. Refusing to rule her people, she did what was better. She served them.
maluki Oh, 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 oh.
e pula kako. E ke akua mana loa, mahalo for this beautiful day and for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us. Mahalo for the opportunity to gather here today in your name to honor our beloved founder, Kealii Bernice Powahi Bishop. We thank you for gifting her with the vision of Kamehameha Schools and using her as a vessel to reach and bless us, the children of Hawaii. We pray that you may continue to guide and bless us, the Pua Powahi, that we may use the resources gifted to us and model our lives in the way of our beloved founder. We ask that you may use us, Heavenly Father, as vessels to perpetuate her legacy for years to come. Bless that you, Lord, may be our strength in all we do and help us to be Oivi leaders. Be with us as we honor our beloved princess and worship you, Lord, in this time together. Ma kainoa kamakua a me ke kiki a me kauhane hemolele. Amene. E olu olu no hui lalo. Mahalo. Aloha mai, aloha e ke akua, aloha e nga amakua, aloha e nga ali'i o Maui, aloha e nga kupuna, aloha e nga makua, aloha e ka lehulehu, aloha pumehana kākou. O Scott Kaleolani Parker ko inoa, ke keki a Lilen lawa o Charlene, no makawao mai ao, no ho ao ma kahului. As po'okula of the Kamehameha Schools Maui, I mahalo you for joining us this morning as we honor our founder, Keli Bernice Pawahi Paki Bishop. This weekend, as we celebrate the 190th anniversary of the birth of Keli Pawahi, I thought it fitting to reflect on her work and words. In my research through the Kaiva Kilo Moku digital collections, I was able to find this excerpt from an assignment our princess completed while attending the Royal Children's School. While the exact date of when this was written is unknown, in it, you'll be able to gather the intelligence and grace of Keali Pawai as she writes on perseverance. By perseverance, we mean the exertions we make to accomplish things which are once begun. It is a trait of character which we ought to cultivate if we wish to overcome difficulties that come in our way. We cannot expect success to attend our efforts, even if our plans are well laid without perseverance. Everyday observation shows the truth of this assertion. We see it illustrated by our friends and acquaintances, and perhaps there is no other place to learn its worth than in the schoolroom. Look at that young lady commencing a difficult piece of drawing. What one thing is more necessary to her success than patient perseverance? A composition is commenced. Do we not often fail from not persevering to write and finish the subject on which we first commence than for any other cause? A difficult question in mathematics is to be solved. How often do these scholars feel the pleasure of solving their own questions who soon give up with the phrase, I cannot do it? It is clear that ignorance would be the consequence if uninfluenced by this trait and therefore how exceedingly necessary to our happiness, as well as to our usefulness in life, to improve in this good quality. As Keli Pawahi, only a young Hamana at the time, shares in her writings, having perseverance means that when you are facing a challenge, you use your mind and your body to overcome it. We recognize perseverance as when you push yourself to work through challenges, it's an important trait for living a life you can enjoy and can be proud of. Recognizing that life is full of challenges and struggles, perseverance is the drive that helps you get past the hard stuff to create successful outcomes for yourself and others. Today at Kamehameha Maui, you can also think of perseverance as kuupau. Hukui defines kuupau as using all of one's might and strength exerting oneself to go to the limit. We embody kūpāo by exhibiting our campus values, imi na uau, kuliapono and kuliana, and pilina. 
These are the things that make us who we are. This is how we are unique. Our challenge from today onward is to remain steeped in these values so that we are willing to go to the limit for not just ourselves, but for each other and for our community. So on this day of remembrance, let Pawahi's words ring true and let it stay with you as Haumana and carry it with you even when you leave us into adulthood. Me oko no ku aloha, e ku pao, e kamehameha maui.
Psalms 24, 1 to 5. Proverbs 31, verses 10 and 
Hello, my kako. <clears throat> this is a day of remembrance, a day that generations before us and prayerfully after us will continue to observe. For it is a day that we recount of what Kelly Bernice Powahi Bishop thought of us, of you, of me, of all of those who have been a part of Kamehameha schools, whether it's through our campus programs, our preschools, our extension education opportunities, we're all Napua o Powahi. It is because of this that we pause to give thanks on this day of remembrance and remain forever indebted to her. So what does that mean? Right now, you may not have a true sense of the death of this, but for someone who's reaching his 50th anniversary of his graduation, I got a couple more years yet, just wait. You know, it means a lot. A lot in the sense that I know that I must do all that I can while I still walk this earth to share Keokua's love with you the same manner that Pawahi did. She did it by pausing her own life to focus on the needs of others. One of the ministers who lived during her time wrote in his journal that he got a call late one night from a church member who had taken ill. He rushed from his home to see the ailing woman, and when she got there, Pawahi was, always, was already there tending to this woman. She had dropped everything she was doing and went to malama her. Her eyes were always looking outward, her hands ready to respond. How about you? Are you willing and able to be there for others in a time of need? She gave up herself to help others to grow. Her teacher said she was the brightest of all the students. And as such, she shared her knowledge and her wisdom with others. She taught, she tutored and taught them so that they might rise up as leaders. And she used her musical talents to enable others to sing praises to Keakua. She helped others become their best. We are called to do the same as well. Start off with yourself and live out the pledge you made when you said, we pledge to develop our potential in all we do, to strive to meet our responsibilities, to progress to the best of our ability. As you strive to become your best, remember to spur others on to become their best. And she gave up her resources. She was an ali'i. She was a kamehameha. As such, she knew her kuleana was to malama her people. And she knew her life was not her own. Like other ali'i, she understood that she needed to develop a means so that when her life ended, her influence didn't. And thus she started kamehameha schools. I don't know what I could be. I have less than one half of 1% of what Pua he had. But what I can do is give up my heart. I can give what I have here to share with you. And it's not for me. The stuff that I have comes from Keokua. It's the love that he poured into his heart through his son, Jesus Christ. My love that I share with you, and I've shared it to a couple of you recently, because I know that things look kind of grim right now, but things will get better. My prayer is this love that Keoku has shown upon me might be shared with all of you and that you might share with others and there'll be this ripple effect cleaning down. And that will last, leave a lasting impact upon whatever lives are touched. And I'll become an enduring influence for everyone to aloha ikikahi ikikahi. Remember, your neighbor is not necessarily the one living right next to you. It could even be the one who you have had difficulties with, someone whose philosophy of life is so different from yours. We're all still called to love everyone. The thing to remember, as you try to live out our kuleana as Napua o Pawahi, is that we do it not for the personal gain or fame. We do it in the same manner as Pawahi, who lived it in the same manner of Christ, and that was to serve Keokua. It was through his strength and his spirit that we should be living each and every day. It is he who we live our lives for. The author of Hebrews tells us, for God is not unjust so as to forget your work and the love which you have shown toward his name, 
by having served and by still serving the saints. As we desire that each one of you demonstrate the same diligence, so as to realize the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you will not be sluggish, but imitators of those who, through faith and endurance, inherit the promises. No, Lila. Let us be imitators of Kelly Bernice Powahi Bishop, of Jesus Christ, and of all those who have come before us, and do the good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Would you join me in prayer? Mahalo Keakua for this time of remembrance and celebration of the love of the life of our beloved princess Bernice Poahi Bishop. Please help us to live out the will and vision that she had for us to be good and industrious young men, women, and Kanaka Maoli. I pray that each and every one of us might make a difference in this world throughout our lives. Please keep us safe throughout the break, and may we truly give thanks for Yesu Christo as we celebrate his birth on Christmas. Mahalo for everything that you do, and mahalo for the life of Princess Bernice Poahi Bishop. Makainoa o kau keiki hiva hiva o Yesu Christo. Amen. E olu olu e noho ilalo. Mahalo. Mahalo.